Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's nice to see you here this morning. And uh, we're going to continue our study from yesterday, though I'm going to go backtrack a little bit um, with some things that we and me and Aaron Iran came across. So uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so very grateful uh, for the time that we have once again to study your word. We pray for those who have been studying. We just ask that um, your Holy Spirit can be here to teach us. We pray for Dwight, and uh, he's not here yet, so we just hope things are well with him and uh, that your angels can watch over him. Uh, may your um, presence in our study help us to see clearly, to understand, and uh, to help us reflect your character to those around us. We know, Lord, there are many things that we are studying that are hard to understand and that we don't fully understand the significance of and that can be quite obscure. But we know, Lord, that you have a purpose in these things. Help us to bring these things together clearly. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. Now, yesterday we had spent some time uh, looking at the connection between 9-11 and 11-9, so between September 11th and November 9th. And um, a lot of this was based upon uh, the, placing Gideon on a line. And specifically, we were looking at Judges chapter 6, verse 11. And we noticed some similarities here uh, to this uh, to 9-11. That is, we have this angel of the Lord, you know, sitting under this oak, you know, presenting himself to um, uh, Gideon. Now, one of the things that Iran noticed is he has a program, which is on the palmoni.org site, where you can uh, take the Bible and you can click on a verse and it'll tell you. Uh, a lot of things about that verse numerically, which which uh, Bible verse it is uh, in the whole Bible. So you can count all these Bible verses. It's a lot easier than anything else I've seen for count, counting Bible verses. And um, so, so this was Judges chapter 6. Verse 11. And it's the 6,666th six Bible verse. I'll just show people this so they can see this. So you can see right here. Kind of highlight that there. So it's, um, I always get mixed up. So reverse verse in that chapter is the 30th. The Bible verse is 6666. Um, from the end of the Bible, the reverse is 2437. So, so he has all these different things. He has the gematria of the verse as well and the chapters, and et cetera. Now, um, being the 6,666 Bible verse, I mean, it's obviously this uh, repetition of the number six, but the significance of it goes into a deeper context of how we've analyzed um, some events on our line and their connection. So one of the connections that we have <coughs> is, uh, and so I know this is obscure for some people, but, but we have to sort of all put it together and see how it's all interlocked. So um, we know that uh, Dwight, who's not here, he was born on July 21st, which is a symbol of midnight, in uh, 19, is it 1959? 
that the year I ran? Sounds right. Yeah. Now, um, maybe the way to do do this, uh, just to deal with. So I'll share this other screen just to, to show you some of these things that you can see them visually. So this this program, it, this is just part of the calculator that comes with uh, with Windows. Um, but you can take a date. And so if I go July 21st, and then I'm going to count like to today, it's 63 years, three months, one week and three days. It's 20. 3,113 days. Um, and Iran is born in 1975. And what's the date again, Iran? Actually, it's um, 77. 77, right. Okay, and the date? October 19. Now, this is uh, this is the cardinal count you see here six 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 five, but it's six thousand six hundred and sixty sixth day from when Dwight is born. Now, of course, this is insignificant, right? It's not important in in some ways, except that if I put <clears throat> uh, my birthday here. So I'm born in 1963, February 6th. I remember my birthday. It's 1,296 days. Now, 1,296 days is six times six times six times six. So we have this, um, this symbol of six, 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 six um, in the difference between my birthday and Dwight's and also Iran's birthday and Dwight's. Um, and then there's also a connection between mine and Stephen's birthday. So if I put Stephen's birthday up here, he's born in 69, and that's gonna be February 11th. And, and his birthday's interesting as well. Now we're 2,119 days apart, which is 13 times 13 times 13. So again, we have these, that's the number of rebellion. So, um, but it's a symbol that, that we have in these lines. So we can also go from Stephen's birthday and we can go to my conversion. So I'm gonna be converted in 1980 on August 11th during the Perseid meteor shower. Now you can see here, sometimes we're doing um, an ordinal count, sometimes we're doing a cardinal count. Now, if I did an ordinal count, uh, this would be 4,200 days. But notice here the symbol, um, 11 years, six months. Now we're looking at Judges 611, and Judges 611 has this connection to uh, Iran and Dwight's birthday plus uh, mine and Dwight's birthday. And now we're looking at Stephen's birthday. Now, Stephen's birthday is significant in an extremely important way. So here it's 11 years and six months. Um, so 4,200 days. Now, if we go to 9-11, so 9-11 is 2001, September 11th. And if we look at the number of days from Stephen's birthday, to September 11th, so it's 11,900 days. That is the number of days that it takes for Ramadan to come around again, because Ramadan drifts with our calendar. Um, the Islamic calendar drifts with our calendar, and it aligns up every 11,900 days, which is 32 years and seven months. So this 32 years and seven months is a symbol of the message to the Levites. Um, so, so we can connect, uh, Stephen to this and, and Stephen didn't notice this. I noticed this and I don't know why he didn't notice this, but Iran also noticed something, uh, as well, uh, that I hadn't noticed. And that had to do with my conversion. 
on August 11th. And, then, and, and if people are watching this, uh, you know, you can always watch it over and write it all down. But anyway, from August 11th, 1980 to September 11th, 2001, an exclusive count, that is if we don't, we count from the end of August 11th to September 11th, it would be 7,700 days. Now, of course, we have a symbol here of 211, which is a symbol of Stephen's birthday because he's born February 11th. So you can take the 211 here and make this application. Now, um, but also, if we had looked at um, the difference between Stephen's birthday and my birthday, or Stephen's birthday and my conversion, it was 11 years and six months, right? As we noted, like Judges 611. But also if we counted it as prophetic months, so, so we have 4,200 days from Stephen's birth to my conversion. And if I divide this by 30, it gives me 140. That's, that's the number of months. And if I divide that by... 12, it will give me that 11 years and that 0.6. So we have this six, this 611 again. But also, this is eight months. So if I take the number of Gregorian months, it's going to be 11 years and six months. But if I take prophetic months, it's going to be 11 years and eight months. And of course, my conversion is on August 11th. So 11, eight. Now, so we bring these up because it's what we've, we've discovered in connection with this. And um, so when we go back to, to what we've been doing with the story of Gideon, we're taking this story as it relates to the July 18, 2020 prediction. That is, that's what Gideon is about, but Gideon, is being raised up at 11.9, that is November 9th. But we have these symbols that we can tie September 11th with November 9th. And we can also tie this verse with uh, the people involved in the chronology, that is Stephen, Aran, Dwight, and myself, who've been primarily working on this chronology. Um, so the question I have, would we see this as significant? Does this help us in taking this call of Gideon and placing it where we've placed it? Is it, is it evidence for that? Because it's not the primary way that we, we do it. We don't take all of these birthdays and, and uh, spans of time and say, well, well this side, is the side evidence. Okay. I'm just saying. So it's evidence. It's it is um, those things that I, I like to see, I like to uh, call as uh, blessings. Just, you know, the things that we see here are, it's not a coincidence, bro. Well, there yeah. are no coincidences. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so we have all of these symbols that, that tie, that tie us together to this, to this message of Gideon, so the call of Gideon. And, and there's many, many more. Some are, are very major uh, ties um, and symbols. But here, we specifically wanted to place the call of Gideon, at least I did, at November 9th as a symbol. Because that's where this call of Gideon uh, should be marked. It's, it's reflecting 9-11, September 11th, but it's specifically placed at 11.9. And, and we showed how um, we can place 11.9 over the first day of the first month, which we also place September 11th. So we can mark this in a specific line. We can mark this as the first disappointment. And then July 18th becomes this second disappointment or the great disappointment lines up with July 18th. Right. So 
So if we're taking this line and we're, we're trying to make it into a line, we've seen it's a line that lines up with other lines, but it's a zoom in. It's not. When we take November 9th and July 18th and we call them midnight and the midnight cry. Uh, here, though, you know, in a sense, July 18th is th the prediction before midnight. But but we have placed them that way especially when we predicted the pandemic, because the pandemic was supposed to occur between midnight and the midnight cry, according to Jeff, back on January 14th, 2017. That's where he placed uh, the pandemic. And we later then had November 9th, 2019, and July 18, 2020, as those waymarks, at least for a time. Right, prior to July 18th, we were looking at them as midnight in the midnight cry, and the pandemic falls between them. And Odilio has shown how the pandemic uh, fits in with that as a structure, illustrating July 18th, 2020. So, some, and, and going all the way, of course, dealing with the 777 days and the 780 days and so forth. I'm not going to go into that study. But we can see then that um, we have this line, but what we have not been able to do as a movement is understand where that, what that line is, to understand where it's zoomed in or, or what it's representing. Because we still think of midnight and the midnight cry as these events that are future that relate to a message to the Levites. So the, when we, and we also looked before at how October 13th, 2018 was the midnight cry for the priest. That's the way it was to be understood initially. So when, when we did that and those times passed, um, we sort of seem to just forget about that. We, we, don't, we don't seem to take that into account. We just kind of think, well, maybe we were wrong at placing it that way. I'm not sure what other people think. But I, I knew that, that that's a separate line of some sort. But how do we deal with that line? And the only way that I know that's consistent is to zoom into a waymark so that that line is a zoom into a waymark on a bigger line, a line above it. And, and we still have not yet defined where all of these lines are. Where is the line above it? And, and that line above it has a waymark. That, that is that whole line is a zoom into. Um, so uh, in some ways, I, I, I take the position. So when we look at that line, okay, let's look at it. So I'm, I'm not going to go to the whiteboard. I'm just going to go to uh, the original um, diagrams that I had for that line. So, so we'll go here. And I'll, I'll just hmm. see if this finds it easily enough. Okay, so here. <clears throat> Let me see, I got all these dates. Sam with Snow's letter. Sorry about that. Um, it's, okay. So this is it. So remember, we, so back in 2018, uh, Tess is going to be presenting on October 3rd. She's going to be presenting this message. Um, two different studies she does that day. One is called um, 
10 years. And the, the other one is called The Midnight Cry. And she's going to, for the first time, present publicly uh, November 9th. And, and she doesn't do it in a very direct way in the first presentation. She seems a bit hesitant. She sort of lays it out for us to see. But everyone sees it, that she's pointing to November 9th, 2019, um, that she's marking this date that's going to be um, the midnight cry for the Levites. So we have we had the midnight cry, October 13th, as you can see here. But, but let's look at this first. First, we have June 2nd, 2017. And Jeff is going to open the Sabbath at 9.11 p.m. The sun's going to be setting there in Italy. Um, can't remember the name of the city. Um, but but we, we have a record of when the sun sets there. And he happens to do this right at sunset. But he kneels down at 9.11 now, it happens to be closing Pentecost, which they're not aware of. Um, and there was, uh, with this study, um, a controversy over how long he had preached. Some thought it was 120 minutes. It could have been an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, the actual timestamp was noted as well as being 120. Uh, but of course, it's Pentecost. So that already gives you a symbol of the 120. Um, so that's why we have this 120 minutes. It's either 120 minutes or an hour and 20 minutes that he's he's going to have this here. So um, so this would have been if I don't know why I didn't. So this would have been like 7 11 p.m. Let's say at, to 9 11 p.m. This 120 minutes, and he's going to close close this uh, meeting. So I don't know why I had 9 11 p.m. So Sabbath begins. And from there, we can count 391 and a half days. So that's the symbol that comes from the prophecy of Josiah, as well uh, from Josiah Lich's prophecy. 391 years, 0.5 months. In that case, here we have 391.5 days. And it's going to bring us to the Julian date of June 15th. Um, now, June 15th is... Um, it's the Gregorian date, June 15th, that is going to mark a beginning of 120 days that's going to go to October 13th. So I know a lot of this is review, but it's also probably sketchy. Now, so this first structure here, this is what I noticed. Um, first, I knew about this June 17th date. Um, and I and I done this calculation, but I didn't know about this June or June 2nd date in 2017, but I didn't know about the June 9th uh, date until the Sabbath, which was the, the 20th, October 20th or 19th, maybe. Anyway, it was at the end of the camp meeting. So it's going to be the last uh, Sabbath of the camp meeting. So this is, it's going to be, I guess it'd be the 20th because October 13th was the Sabbath. So the next Sabbath was the 20th, and it's going to be on the 20th at the camp meeting, the last Sabbath of the camp meeting, that I'm going to uh, uh, pre present this part of the study. Now, um, because I got an email telling me about this one, but when I was telling uh, some people before, before the meeting started in the morning about this, they told me about what happened in 2018. So this is in 2018 on June 9th. So it's going to be one year and one week later um, at 11, 9 11 p.m., that Jeff is going to end the Sabbath with a 9 11 prayer. So it's from this one then that we count this 126 days, which is what Daniel from Brazil was counting when he was predicting November or October 13th. And he was doing that on October 3rd that he told us about this, but he had figured this out on July 27th, 2018. And so when we took all of these different things, the 120 years representing the 120 uh, days that we have here, the 120 years of uh, Saul, David and Solomon, and the 391 and a half years of the Kings of Judah, that's what I was marking. That's why I, I line this up here. I was taking, lining that up with 
uh, the kings of Judah in the United Kingdom and the divided kingdom. Um, we actually find this is the structure of Samuel Snow's letters. That is, if we took Samuel Snow's first letter, and when it was published, there's going to be six days, just like there's six days between here. Um, and, and so all of this fits in with this structure of, of Samuel Snow's letters. It's not all shown here. But this is about 9-11. And so what I'm trying to say is that this line here, uh, where we have this as the midnight cry, and, and we could take this and put this into a structure where we have a period of darkness, um, we have an increase of knowledge, we have a formalization of a message, um, and, and, and I haven't done that, and, and maybe we should, but I've done it in my head. I mean, the formula, formalization of the message is going to be uh, what, what's going to happen here in connection with time setting being presented into this movement. But, but you know, that's sort of more of another study. But the idea here then is that this October 13th, that's a midnight cry, is really dealing with zooming into November 9th, 2019. So November 9th, 2019 is a way mark on another line. So this line here, this whole line, all of this structure is a line that's produced by looking at another way mark that is a way mark on another line. Does that make sense to people? I know this is a long explanation. <clears throat> because we're not, we're not having multiple lines being laid down of priests, Levites, and Nethanims um, that are staggered like Parminder did. So when we say that this is the midnight cry, it definitely is not the midnight cry for the priests. It's a midnight cry for this line that is a zoom in onto midnight, November 9th, 2019, which is only midnight on another line. Does that make sense? Yes, it does to yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is the the key, I guess, that helps us understand these layers of lines that we have. Now, when we look then, so if we go I'm sorry, what were you identifying as the key? The fact that we can zoom into a way mark and create a line. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. All right. You know, and agreed. And who knows, we could zoom into October 13th, 2018. And, you know, maybe there's a line there too. You know, I haven't done that. But, you know, you could you could zoom into any waymark. And when we say a waymark, it's one of the seven waymarks on the line. Right? Because we have a line, there's always these seven waymarks. So that means I can zoom into... Um, that way mark and I can get a line, right? So those, now we don't try to create these lines. That is, I mean, somebody could think we try to do that, but what we do is we just notice way marks and then we notice that these are lines. And so we we're sorting through what happens, but we can't end up with these multiple way marks, um, uncertain what to do with them. Right. And this is this is what's happened to this movement from Jeff having these uh, these larger way marks and then zooming in and, and continuing to find way marks. <clears throat> so when we look at the call of Gideon here and we have this November 9th um, symbol, we know that this is November 9th is serving a purpose in the July 18, 2020 prediction that is different than in uh, the line we had with October 13th, 2018, right? It's serving a different purpose because October 13th, 2018, in that line that it is, it's the midnight cry. But it's, it's a line that's zoomed into November 9th. 
but it's a November 9th that that serves a different purpose then than it does here. Because in the call of Gideon, what is this line? What would we call this line dealing with the call of Gideon? Where, where would we, what line is this? Would we call it the July 18th line? Would it be more zoom into July 18th? Wasn't wasn't um, the story of Gideon uh, the one that Jeff equated with this July 18th um, number? Yes. So so Jeff was taking the story of Gideon and he was saying that, you know, with what had happened with Parminder, that this group was being whittled down. And so right. he connected the what was going to happen with July 18th with the story of Gideon. Right. So so Jeff is the one that has associated this, but he had associated the Gideon earlier on with the Sunday law. Right. So so when we had this line of Gideon. Um, connected with July 18th, and we're saying it's the message of July 18th. So we've shown how Parminder's message is the message that's associated with Cicero and Deborah and Barak are. Um, messages that counteract the work of Parminder in his type of time setting. So the messages of Deborah and Barak relate to uh, chronology. But then we have the message of Gideon specifically, that is this message of um, November 9th. And, uh, and we have this change that happens, you know, we have the September 7th is is, is going to be part of this line um, in some ways, right? So we, we haven't really dealt with that specifically how it relates to this line. We dealt with that, how it related to the end of Parminder's line. Um, and so we still haven't sorted out exactly how we would do this line, but we do know that Jeff is that prophet, right? That's being referred to here. There's a prophet that's been given a message. And, and we could probably relate this to September 7th, um, uh, 2019 as well. Um, Jeff's message, he's going to give this message as a prophet. So he's going to be tying us to this 9-11. So when we take this, what happens on September 7th, remember this, this I do this calculation on September 7th, 2019. <clears throat> Going back to October 13th, um, 2018, right? And I find the center of this structure, which is March 27th, but I'm also counting the 63 days, which September 7th is six times, uh, or seven times nine, which is 63. And so that ties me to November 9th. So it shows that the message of the prophet here, which is Jeff's message, um, is going to be the thing that 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 relates to this call of Gideon, and the call of Gideon is going to relate to um, July 18th. But we're placing this angel coming down as November 9th, 2019, because of all of the symbols that we found with 611. So, <clears throat> so I think we would be safe to say that September 7th, 2019. Um, is part of this line because it's ending the line of the previous judge, Gideon uh, uh, or uh, Deborah and Barak. So Gideon is is relating to that line, right? It's the message of the prophet. Do people see what I'm saying here? That it's tying this line together to the previous line. <clears throat> yes, somewhat. Okay. <clears throat> and this is the message of July 18th, but the message of July 18th has a line. It has events that precede it. So we, we would have to say September 7th, 2019 was important. 
for the July 18, 2020 prediction. Jeff is not going to present it then, but that's going to open the door for him then to look back to restore this message, which had been rejected. And then um, we, we moved on from here, right? So we, we looked at the, the offering. And where did we place this offering? So we have this, this offering, this first test, right? He's gonna take this, this offering of this kid and uh, um, right, so he's gonna have- right, The okay. cakes of figs, I think it was. Yeah, the unleavened cakes. Yeah, that was it. Uh, we're made of an ephah of flour. And um, there's going to be this cloth in a pot, and, right? And he, and he put it on the cloak, right? So we play this as um, not July 18th itself, right? So what did we place it as? Because we took uh, from verse 21 and 22, 621 and 622, and we don't really have that as a way mark per se on a line, right? But we took it as June 21st and June 22nd of 2020. So if we're going to take these verses representing what happened on June 21st and June 22nd, that is the publication on June 21st with the worldwide proclamation on June 22nd, that seems to fit. Yeah, that's what we decided. Yes, that's what we agreed to. Right. So and that was a test then that should have confirmed to us. And, and I think it did confirm to us about July 18th as uh, even though we're publishing these, it was, it, it is sort of this first test, right? Right. So, so that's where we left off yesterday. Now, now Dwight sent a paper about the EFOB and I mean, I, I don't, you know, and I, I'm usually wrong when it comes to these things, but I look at all this information about the EFA, and I don't know if it's that important in the context of this story, other than that we know that an EFA represents judgment, right? That's what we determined by the verses we looked at. He gives us much more verses, but, but the EFA is about just measurements, doing things correctly, if we look at, at the different verses that address this. And um, so if we're going to look at this offering this, that is being prepared, this is this analysis of these dates and these structures that are then going to be presented, right? That, that would be the idea here. And this is going to be the message of the July 18th prediction about Nashville. So it was, it was done as a test, right? Because what Gideon says, <clears throat> um, because he wants to know, oh my Lord, if if the Lord, if the Lord Jehovah be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? So remember, we referred back to this Egypt, which is April 26th. 1533 and we showed the structure of this so so what is what what this message has done the message of july 18th is it was going back to the past understanding the past understanding the prophecy of josiah understanding the deliverance from egypt understanding the story of joseph all of these different things that came together we continued to examine right and we set them out as a test. That is, we were getting this message ready. And, 
And then it's going to be confirmed. The miracle that happens on June 22nd, that didn't cost us anything, right? So all, all the money was given back to Jeff for the publication of that advertisement in the Tennessee. Uh, and yet we get worldwide attention. And of course, we, we also catch the attention of the Adventist church for the first time. Yeah, for the people high up, obviously, there's always a few people who knew about us, but in a general sense, the church did not know about us. So, <clears throat> so that's where we were finishing yesterday. I don't remember, remember the exact uh, point. Um, so now we have um, verse 24. So what is verse 624? Judges 624. 24th day, six months. Well, or the 26th day of the fourth month. Oh, yeah, right. Right, which is the <laughs> symbol. Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> so it is the symbol for July 18th because it was the 26th day of the fourth month. And of course, that's fourth month, 26th day in reverse, but it doesn't matter the order. Um, that we marked as July 18th. So that gave us July 18th Gregorian. We did have the 10th day of the fifth month that marked um, July 18th Julian, which is July 31st Gregorian. But uh, Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah is peace, right? The Lord is peace unto this day. It is yet in Oprah of the Evozerite. By is Abiezrites, Abiezrites. I can never say that one. Okay, so <clears throat> would this altar be the July 18th? Um, would we mark this on July 18th? Because remember, the Midianites represent strife. But July 18th is a message against this strife, this controversy. And this is peace, right? So is this where we would place the building of the altar as July 18th itself? Because we had the, the offering of the cakes being accepted on as June 21st and June 22nd. Now we have... July 18th as a symbol. Are, are we going to take this and place it there? Or some other date? <clears throat> and notice when he builds that altar, that they're going to offer something on that altar. So that altars, so... So it came to pass the same night. So this is all part of that July 18th uh, date. That he's going to take a father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old. And throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath cut down, the grove that is by it, right? So... So, so this, they've taken down, they're going to take down this altar. <clears throat> He's going to build a new altar. He takes down this old altar and offers this seven-year-old bullock up on it. <clears throat> so would this be July 18th or would we place this somewhere else? <clears throat> because we're going to have more tests that are going to come right so we we placed this at july 18th if i remember correctly yesterday right we took this the symbols here of the seven times <clears throat> this altar of july 18th was built upon a message from the past that ties all of these events together. And we have the 10 men 
that help help in this process. And the 10 represents a remnant. Right. And we talked about how this message, um, this support for this message is going to be done by night. Right. So part of it has to do with, so this is all of this message that is being done. It's all of this connected with July 18th, because we have this opposition to the July 18th message that still existed, right? The altar of Baal still existed within this movement, even in the midst of the July 18, 2020 prediction, correct? It's this altar of Baal, this worship of these false gods that are opening the door for the Midianites, for strife and controversy to come in. Right. Yeah. And so didn't we uh, apply this, that particular um, analogy to what's still going on right now? Yes. Well, because after July 18th, <clears throat> Um, we still have to continue doing this stuff. I mean, in a sense, it's all through this history. Right. Uh, we're doing this. There's this opposition to the July 18th message within this movement. Yes. Right. It was existing before July 18th. It was existing after. And so we're yeah, saying we've even put qualifiers as to uh, how it's being rejected, even though there, it's it's on the face is not. Right. Because they're. They're rejecting many of the arguments that we presented that actually support July 18th. That's right. So if you reject the basis for July 18th, you can't say you accept July 18th. That's right. So that, that's been part of the problem. It's like, well, we accept July 18th. It was from God because Jeff said it, and, and we're accepting what Jess said, but we're not going to accept any of the arguments you give for it. <clears throat> well, isn't that what got us kicked out <laughs> yeah well, that's what yeah, that's what got us kicked out. so i mean and we can see that the same arguments that were <clears throat> being presented in the december 6 2020 declaration are the same arguments that are still being used within this movement regarding yeah. what's happening so it's the same arguments don't want all of these numbers it's too confusing um you know, they're going to take some, they're going to pick and choose. <laughs> yeah. So when it fits in with their, uh, their ideas about the pandemic and the vaccinations and the mandates, they will accept it. Um, but anything else they won't, right? Or if it fits in with Trump, they'll accept it. So they'll, they'll use numbers when they want to, but they don't want to look at things all the time. And some of them even who, because <clears throat> I know some people who don't even like the direction that they went with Odilio or with Collins' use of, of chronology. So there's a large portion in this movement who don't like any of that that still exists within this movement. Now, and we even have, you know, we look at the Hebrew numbers. So, I mean, night shows up as a word a lot, but in um, 627, um, now 627 is, is a bit more of, a, of, a, of an obscure date uh, to people in this movement. But does anybody remember what <clears throat> June 27th, 2020 was about? So if we're going to take 627. And we're going to look at this by night. The 3915 is a symbol of the 391.5. Um, but we're also looking at this verse, Judges 627. Does anybody remember what June 27th was about? That's the Levites. 100 okay. days of prayer. Um, well, June 27th. Has, has a bunch of symbolism to it. It's March 27th is the message to the Levites. 
Uh, okay, I got I got it mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> but when Samuel Snow wrote his Pentecost letter, he wrote it on Pentecost, June 22nd, the sixth day of the third month in 1844, is going to be republished or it's going to be published the first time on June 27th. And June 27th is the 11th day of the third month. And if you double it, it becomes 622, right? The 22nd day of the sixth month, which is the date it was written on. And June 22nd is a symbol for FFA. And Jeff's the one who established that symbol without connecting it to any of these other things, just simply because they received $165,000 on June 22nd, 2011. And then three years later, on June 22nd, 2014, they have the first camp meeting in Arkansas. And so, so Jeff connects those two June 22nds. So there's a lot more to it there. But um, <clears throat> so we have June 27th, though, that's connected to the symbol of June 22nd. But in uh, 2020, we had noticed that there was some other aspects regarding June 27th. <clears throat> and um, let me see if I can find this here. So here it is. I'll show you this. So this is a chart that we made. Um, it's the one on the bottom here. I'm just going to move it up a bit so it's not. Nor the one on the top. Look at the one on the bottom. So January 14th, 2017, Jeff is going to present uh, that there's going to be a pandemic between midnight and the midnight cry. And that's going to be 1,533 days before March 27th, 2021. And if we remember, March 27th, 2021 is 273 days before December 25th, 2021. But Jeff had taken this structure from June 9th uh, to January 11th, so June 9th, 2018, to January 11th, uh, 2020. That was this uh, structure which we call the Levitical chiasm. So it had uh, September 7th in it there. It had November 9th. It had um, uh, June 9th, 2018. It had um, August 11th, 2018. And it had um, uh, October 13th, 2018. So it had all of this structure, tying this all together. And then it had 600 or 63 weeks from January 11th, 2020 to March 27th, 2021, which was 441 days, which is 114 in reverse. So anyway, this March 27th, 2021 um, is connected to this January 14th, 2017 by 1,533 days, a wonderful manifestation of the power of God. But this is where I first noticed that uh, if you take 1260 and 273 and add them together, you get 1533. I think somebody else noticed it before me. This is when I noticed it. And the date there is June 27th, 2020. It's 21 days before July 18th. And 21 days is representative of Daniel chapter 10, where Daniel fasts for 21 days. And I, I didn't think that we should fast for those 21 days, but I understood that there was a work that needed to be done from June 27th to July 18th. And that work was really um, what I think is being represented here in the story of Gideon, where he took 10 men of his servants. <clears throat> yeah, Daniel fasted in Daniel 10 for 21 days, not Daniel 9, Angela. Okay, <clears throat> um, and that's where he gets the vision then of Daniel chapter 11 and 12. So, so I'm taking this, he, Gideon took 10 men of his servants, so 10 means a remnant, and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. So we were talking about this 
um, this period of time. So this is the period of time in which um, what I'm doing in, in this study dealing with July 18th is being ignored. This June 27th date's being ignored. All of this is being ignored, but we have a remnant that's represented here, 10 men. And this is a test and it's done by night. It's the 391.5. So all of these structures, all of these things that, that has been the basis of this message was being examined. Now we have a great deal of light coming to us in that period from June 27th to July 18th that people may not be aware of. Definitely if you weren't following the studies we were doing, then <clears throat> you wouldn't be aware of it. But we really believe that, that God was giving us light about July 18th. And, and this is where I become even more, um, I think, more clear about the fact that July 18th could fail. Because I'd been waiting for Jeff. So we had looked at this, um, and I'm just going to go here. So scatter it a little bit, but <clears throat> uh, let me see if I can find it quickly. So I'm going to just go to uh, uh, the Wayback Machine. And on the Wayback Machine, you can find the page <clears throat> as it was on July 22nd. So this is what uh, the YouTube page looked like on July 22nd. Uh, 2020. So before they started removing all of the videos. So you can see all the different presentations that and when they were uploaded. Now you'll see some of them. Um, the last song of Moses, Daniel Fontenot's presentations, I think they were just being uploaded again, because they put these title pages on them. So I find it I found it really annoying when they did that they had a video that was up. And then they re re-uploaded it so that they could get a title page on it. I didn't like that because I like to see the dates they were actually originally uploaded, but they do have the dates on them when they were given. But the question I had asked had to do with Jeff's morning presentations. So Jeff is doing presentations on Daniel's last vision. Now he's going to do 51 presentations altogether. Uh, the last time he does these presentations, you'll see here, um, uh, July 11th, 2020, he's going to do two presentations on that Sabbath. Uh, this one here, number 49, is posted after because they put the title page on again after the original. Do you remember originally. what the presentations were about? Yeah, Daniel's last visions oh, were, yeah. You said that. Yeah. So, um, and then you can see that um, he actually does one on June 27th because that's going to be uh, two weeks before, and you can see this one that they didn't put the title page on uh, right here in the middle of over here. I guess hopefully you can see that. I could probably make this bigger. I don't know. Yeah, I got all these ones in um, yeah. in the transcripts. I got all the transcripts of these ones. I don't have the actual recordings anymore. Yeah. So anyway, you can see that Jeff is is doing these presentations on Sabbath only. Is my point, right? The 27th, the 20th, he does two on the 20th, only one on the 27th of June. Um, he does one on the 13th of June, one on the 6th. These are all Sabbaths, right? And this is his one from uh, the pandemic prediction, 781 views it had at that time. Um, uh, but anyway, you're, you're going to see these, all these videos, and you're going to see that, that, uh, Jeff is going to present his last one um, as a morning study. So this is, I think this is a Sabbath as well, March 23rd. Uh, the last one, I think it's the 13th. Uh, let me see. So I just got to go to the calendar again. So in May, yeah, so the last one, so he does the one on the 23rd is is a Sabbath presentation. But the last one that he does it is the morning studies is May 13th. And so, so we now have these other presentations being given. 
that um, Elijah's impending conflict. I don't know if people remember, but I mean, I was watching all of these presentations and wondering when is Jeff going to present the idea that, that I sent him on April 26, 2020, that showing that our, our prediction is in a line of failed predictions. So I thought in May he was working towards that, but then he stopped presenting and Daniel Fontenot's presenting, right? Now he's gonna do, of course, the Sabbath presentations, right? So he's gonna do, uh, you know, May 23rd. And then the next one that he's gonna do is going to be um, not until June 6th. So he's gonna do uh, a presentation on Sabbath on June 6th and June 13th and June 20th. But now as he's doing these presentations, he's not referring to any of my studies dealing with that this might be a failed prediction because it's on a line of failed predictions. So, so in a sense, what I'm saying is that this was being done in darkness or at night. That we had to do it in night, not by day. That is, it wasn't, it wasn't being presented to everyone. Only those that were watching my studies were aware. And so I'm saying that that message is, is a symbol uh, here in uh, the story of Gideon that's presented on this June 27th date, that is Judges 6, 27. So it represents that work that was being done prior to July 18th. And, and I mark this June 27th date. Does that make sense to people? I know it's it's a little, a little scattered, but can we see then that we should be able to mark this work that they have to do by night? Now it's going to be about destroying the altar of Baal and rebuilding an altar. And, and so it doesn't just represent June 27th. All this work that I was doing in the studies, all this work that we were doing in studying apart from what the school of the prophets were doing is is something that was given us to destroy the altar of Baal because that altar of Baal is that worship of idols the idol of self that has allowed this criticism this strife to come into the movement Now, is this too subjective for people or is this, you know, am I just weaving a tale from a story in the Bible or does it fit with what happened? Is, is there anybody having trouble with this? I mean, there's a lot of numbers, a lot of information. So, so we finished up this. We know that this all has to do with July 18th. And that we have this blowing of the trumpet. So this is a message of warning, um, right? Because he blew the trumpet, Gideon does. And Ebi Ezer was gathered after him and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher, unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali. And they came up to meet them. Now, we're saying that this is after July 18th that this, this occurs. So how would we take this story that happens after the building of the altar and the offering and that the people recognize this happening? And then we know, know that the Midianites, the Amalekites, the children of the east are, east are gathered together. 
right? They pitched this pitched in the valley of Jezreel. And the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet. Now, I mean, our tendency would try to say that this is going to happen before July 18th. But if we understand what the enemy is, does the enemy really come after July 18th that we now see the Midianites, the Amalekites, and so forth gathered together against the July 18th message? Yeah, I'd say after. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. So this is after. So this is the enemies now come in. And, and again, we're, we're going to need signs of the fleece that this is going to be the next, the next event. So I'm saying that this tearing down of this altar is, um, is stuff that happens in connection with July 18th. But now the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the East gathering together. And, and we're going to have to probably, there's lots of symbols here. Um, but this is going to have to be applied to uh, what happens after July 18th and to some point in our line. And so this is where we now pick up the sign of the fleet. So, and, and we're not going to get this finished here today. We're going to have to come back to this tomorrow and we'll probably go over this again. So we know the sign of the fleece. There are two different signs, right? There's the one where he puts the fleece, this fleece of wool on the floor. And he, he says, if the dew is on the fleece only and the ground's dry, then I know that I can take on this work um, because you will be with me, right? And then he does the reverse. Well, if the ground is wet and the fleece is dry, right? So why these two uh, two different tests, and what where would we mark the sign of the fleece? So I know we might have to go back over this to. But is there anybody who has any uh, maybe a formal maybe a formalization? They line up with a formalization of a message, or of our message okay well maybe but but i'm just asking about the fact that they're opposites like oh, okay. one, is the, one is the fleece is wet the ground's dry the other one uh the fleece is dry and the ground's wet so what would that tell us what are the sign of the fleece what is it Just in, in the very basic nature of, of it. <clears throat> it's, it's a reverse. What is a reverse? Mirror. It's a mirror, isn't it? Now, what does the do represent? Well, do is water, of course. Yeah. Water rain. Maybe the. I'll go ahead. Well, the Holy Spirit wouldn't it represent the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so we know that this this is is about God's Spirit. And, and we're sort of testing this. Is God leading us or not? Now, if you remember after July 18th, um, we continued studies. We did studies on um, uh, Acts chapter 27, for instance. There was all kinds of studies that we did, right? We, we, we began doing regular studies. We had been doing studies um, on spe specific topics, and now we, uh, you know, prior to July 18th, and now we, we, we had this disappointment, and we had to try to understand it, and and so we we studied different things. We studied uh, Acts 27. I can't remember all the different topics that we looked at. We went through. Uh, we reviewed our history. We finally, and and then we went into a study of. Um, examining the foundation i don't remember when we moved to that study but but somewhere along the line um 
you know, we're going to have December 6, 2020. And I don't know where that, what we were studying at that time. Uh, there was some studies that were being brought up regarding um, Daniel chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, right? Now, could this fleece um, have anything to do with these studies and what was happening in the decision making process in this movement regarding um, what happened on December 6, 2020? Or would we put this somewhere else? I know I'm not asking a good question, but or in a question in a good way. <clears throat> Because the sign of the fleece, now Gideon, remember Gideon isn't a person in our movement. He's the message of July 18th is being tested. Now, how is it being tested? Who is testing it? And how are they testing? Are there two different opposite types of tests that are being done? Or is are do these this represent the same test? Was God leading us or not? Is that the question we were asking after July 18th? Who was asking that question? And was that question being asked in two different ways and being and getting two different conclusions? Alden, did you have a thought or Rosanna? Now, understanding the lines, the study we did on understanding the lines happened, started on December 26th. When did the understanding of the lines end? Um, well, it went on for uh, let me see I don't know when it ended it I think we did 187 presentations or something like that or I don't remember how many it was um, but I'll, I started on December 26th so um, <clears throat> I think it actually ended it was 150 presentations it ended August 4th 2022 I think that's what I have here but I'm, I'm not looking at all the videos I thought we were I thought we were still doing the uh, understanding the lines because I got 206 of them. OK, right. Yeah. So we're still doing it. OK, right. Yeah. So we're understanding the lines. The one I'm looking for is examining the foundation. Where's that one? I'm looking at the wrong one. <laughs> um, yeah, I got those as well. I, not, I'm not on me, though. OK, let me see here. Uh, yeah, I, was, I just clicked on the wrong one. I, I wanted examining the foundation. Okay, that's the one. That one we did 187 of. Uh, okay, yeah. So that one's going to start in 2020, I believe. Yeah, so that's going to start November. Let me see. No, it ends November 22nd, 2021. And it's going to start. Yeah, so it's going to start on. March 7th, 2021. So on March 7th, 2021, we're going to start examining the foundation. So that's still not the, uh, I know, sorry about this. It's just, I'm trying to figure this out. What are you trying to figure out? Uh, I'm what, trying to figure what out, we started exactly out what we were studying um, in, uh, 
uh, let me see here, in 2020 afterwards. So. Um, right after, you're talking about right after July 18? Yeah. Um, I thought we were like Esther. Well, uh, yeah. So we did the studies in Esther. Uh, the studies in Esther were, um, that's going to be, yes, that's going to be what we were studying. November 29th, 2020. On December 6th, 2020, we were on number, uh, number two in the studies of Esther. So we started them a week before we, we were kicked out. So that's what I wanted to know. So we were doing these studies on Esther. And... Um, yeah, and, and Dwight's going to start coming in and being involved a bit more in the studies. He's going to be presenting on, on studies of Esther. Yeah, because it was you in the beginning, and then Dwight started taking over. Yeah, well, I'm not taking over, but... Well, yeah. you know what I mean. He started presenting. <laughs> yeah. Now, we did... Um, you know, we were doing the Friday night studies in sort of not a particular fashion. Um. So we had the studies of Esther. So I don't think we things that don't have as, as playlists, but I know we did the studies on Acts 27 and I'd have to go way back uh, to look through all this. But, but the point is what we were doing is we were testing the message, right? And we did the studies on Ezekiel as well. I, I can't remember when we did the studies on Ezekiel, but... Um, yeah. yeah you're right we did a bunch of on Ezekiel. i think there was over 100 on them too yeah um doesn't look like i have all my playlists i can't see all my playlists oh okay there they are yeah the studies in ezekiel we did 105 of those and yeah, those started in, um, we did those for, yeah, so those are going to be one of the first studies we do. We start that off this 23rd, 2020. So, yeah, so we're going to do these studies in Ezekiel. Um, okay. So anyway. We're studying here, but the question is, what are these, what are these fleeces? Can these fleeces represent two different ways in which the message is being tested? That seems logical yeah, at this it point. Does seem logical. Okay. Now, and, and this is. You know, this is the message of July 18th being tested, right? Was God leading this movement or not? And no matter which way we looked at it, it gave us the correct answer. But you're going to have a group of people that are going to reject God's leading. But it's, it's still going on. Uh, I would think the sign of the fleece is still here. Now, what it's going to develop into is, if we're going to look at two different ways, could it be that we're testing uh, July 18th itself and also the Trump prediction? I think the Trump prediction will put the nail in the coffin. Okay, so... So I would say that, you know, that, that it's possible that this sign of this fleece is still, is still going on. Now, if that's true, when we start to take the rest of the story of Gideon, it's going to be a repeat and enlarge to some degree, right? Right. But also we know that the message of July 18th has still not come to the full to its to its its purpose hasn't been realized yet yeah. 
I agree. Right. Because we have this Midianite oppression. The Midianite oppression represents this strife, this controversy, this division that exists within the movement. But the Midianite oppression and the worship of self, the self-idolatry, has opened the door for this conflict that's going to happen in the future. Right? And this conflict is... Uh, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the children of the East coming against God's people, right? And the message that's going to deliver them is the message of Gideon. But you know, we're going to have the whittling down of the 300. So that's going to have to be a repeat, right? Right, because we're we're taking this and we're 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 bringing this all the way up to, you know, after July 18th. So far in this story, but when we get to chapter seven, and we're going to deal with uh, 300 men, well, that's going to have to go back. At least the way I understand it, because the 300 has already, in, well, it's not completed, but it already began earlier, right? Because this is the whittling down of this message, right? I mean, that's how we've understood it, unless we're understanding it incorrectly. So, <clears throat> so you see, you see where we're going. Hopefully people see what, what we're doing here. So if we're going to go back to this fleece, um, these are tests. But, but these tests are also going to be illustrated later as well. Now, we can also say that these two tests... Um, so we're testing July 18th. Now, so the way that I look at it is I look at Collins' uh, focus upon Trump being reelected as, as a test. That is, we're examining something. But remember, we were examining that, examining that on December 6th, or at least we were supposed to. So if we go back December 6, 2020, they had started this, these studies on Sunday mornings which means we had to move our study because we were using Sunday mornings, but they wanted Sunday mornings. So, um, so we started these studies on Sunday mornings on Daniel, and this was with everyone on Daniel 11, verse uh, one to four, right? Um, I can't remember who was particularly leading out. Was it uh, Guy or was it Larry? Larry. I think it was Lee. Lee. I think it was Guy leading out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, on December 6th, we 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 expected this study to be continuing. And instead, there was no study. And the declaration was released, if you remember it. So we were we were now cut out. We were, I was banned, I was kicked out of WhatsApp, you know, personally, I was. And um now we had no access to our communication with these people, right? There was no more interest in them talking to us. But some people still remained in the WhatsApp group for a while until they got kicked out. But basically, at a certain point, they just stopped doing anything. I mean, they did mess, uh, presentations for a while, but by February or whatever, that, that was it. What right? are they doing now? Are they still doing presentations? I don't think they are. They definitely, um, if they are doing present, I think they stopped in February, right? And then they're going to sell the School of the Prophets right away. Um, so all this stuff happens, you know, shortly after the declaration. Mm, yeah. So, so, yeah. So that's where we, uh, we're going to come back to this. Um, tomorrow, hopefully Dwight's here. Um, 
but yeah, so we're and, and we're going to have to examine this more thoroughly too. I think this whole story of Gideon, we really need to sort out properly. I don't think we can just, you know, skim over this because we keep coming back. We keep seeing more. We keep. Yeah, I don't think we can skim over it either. <laughs> okay. Keeps okay. coming. Okay, thanks everyone for uh, your participation. Let's close with a word of prayer. The dear Father in heaven, we are so very grateful again for these studies. Um, we pray for each person who participates in these, whether they um, just watch it on YouTube or, or listen live. We ask that your angels can watch over them and help each of us to understand the time we are in. Um, be with us throughout this day and uh, bring us again, again together to study your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.